Last month I gained over 13,000 new Instagram followers in just the span of a couple weeks after a few of my painting reels went viral. In this video, I just wanted to share some of my tips and tricks for creating eye-catching reels specifically for artists. We'll talk about some of the technical stuff like filming and editing, but also how to create reels that feel authentic to you your artwork and your brand and not just getting caught up in creating trendy content in the hopes of going viral. I'll be breaking down some of my most viral reels, including this one from last year that got 1.5 million views and brought in over 23,000 new followers just from this one single video. Let me start by saying I fully understand the social media algorithms are tricky and unpredictable and frustrating. And while there's not one secret to going viral, there are a few things that I've implemented into my painting process reels that have definitely increased overall views, even if not all of them are going viral. And just one more thing before we get into it, I know you already know this, but just a reminder to you and also to myself, more followers on social media does not equal happiness. It does not equal business success. So it's definitely not something to get too caught up in, but it can be a great tool for marketing your art business and more importantly, connecting with other fellow creators. Here are my top 10 tips. Number one, use manual focus when you're doing painting process videos or drawing process videos. This makes a huge difference in the quality of your videos and it took me a couple years before I started doing it. And here's what I mean by that. When you film yourself painting, if you use automatic focus, the camera is gonna switch between focusing on the painting and focusing on your hand when your hand is in the middle of the screen. See what I mean? The painting is switching between being clear and fuzzy because the camera doesn't know if it should focus on the art or your hand. A lot of my first YouTube videos and even my first few Skillshare classes used automatic focus and now I cringe when I look back on them. Now I always use manual focus when I film, so no matter where my hand is or what I'm doing on the paper, the camera will always be clear and focused on the actual painting, which is what the viewer wants to see. It's a much better experience for your audience and it helps your video look a lot more professional. Number two, whatever you use to film with, whether it's a tripod or just some sort of clamp for your phone, make sure it's mounted to something other than your desk or your painting surface. So many painting videos end up being shaky because every time you move your arm or you rinse off your paintbrush, the camera is shaking or swaying with the movement. Even if it's just the slightest bit, it can be a little uncomfortable to watch or sometimes it can even make you dizzy. And again, this is another one of those that I am totally guilty of doing in the past. I typically use the canvas mount when I film. It's typically meant for phones, but I just rest my Sony ZV-1 camera in the phone slot. I used to have it mounted to the base, which rested on my desk, and that caused shakiness in my old videos. Even though my desk is pretty solid, the constant moving of my arm caused movement in the camera. Now I have it clamped to my windowsill above my desk. So even if my desk is moving like crazy, the camera isn't moving at all. So my footage is still nice and still. And this will obviously depend on your specific painting setup, but try your best to find something else to put your phone or your camera on, whether it's a desk nearby or a dresser, or just putting your tripod on the floor instead of your desk. Um, to help keep your camera nice and steady, which will then make your footage nice and steady. Number three, sometimes the simpler, the better. In my personal experience, the reels that I post of painting one simple flower or a simple leaf stem, they always outperform any of the reels that have a more intricate composition or something that's filled with florals. The simple ones always, always outperform the intricate ones. For example, this reel that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, which got 1.5 million views, and this one reel alone brought in 23,241 new followers, it's just one simple flower. It's nothing extravagant, it's just some loose brush strokes, but those strokes capture your attention from the start and they make the viewer wonder what that end result will look like. So they stick around to watch it. Another example is this reel that I just recently posted a few weeks ago. Again, it's a very simple flower. I honestly just painted it on a scrap piece of paper. And this is the one that got 693,000 views and brought in over 8,000 new followers alone. 
and it's still racking up views to this day. But of course, if you do have a more intricate or complex piece that you're really proud of, by all means, post it. You should absolutely post whatever the heck you want to post on Instagram. But I'm just meaning to say you shouldn't count out those sweet and simple paintings or the little doodles or warm-up paintings because those can really perform well too. So I usually end up doing a little bit of both. Number four, use real-time footage instead of, or in addition to, sped up or time-lapse videos. I think there was a time and place for those time-lapse videos, especially in 2020 and 2021. They were super popular, and I had a lot of my time-lapse videos go viral back then, but I'm seeing a lot less of that now. What I do now to make my reels feel more cinematic is to use real-time footage, but just slice and dice the painting process to just show the most beautiful brush strokes, like adding little details to a rose or showing a sweeping stroke of a leaf, and try to include different angles instead of just the top view. I like to also include side views and close-ups in addition to the bird's eye view. That way you can still show bits and pieces of the overall process, but in a little more of an interesting and dynamic way than just one top view shot in a full sped up process. Number five, show a quick peek of the end result before you get into the beginning part of the painting process. Here's an example of one I posted recently that got over 70,000 views. I showed a quick preview of the final rose with some text overlay that said, let's Let's paint a loose watercolor rose. So the viewer knows what's coming, they see the final result, but now they want to see how you got there, which I then show bits and pieces of throughout the reel. So that's an easy way to hook the attention of the viewer rather than just starting with a blank page where they don't know what you might be painting or drawing. You only get a second or two to catch their attention and stop them from scrolling, so that's an easy way to do that. I don't do this on all of my reels, but I do incorporate it every now and then, and those reels tend to do pretty well. Number six is one that I feel deep in my soul, and I mentioned it briefly at the beginning of the video, but that is to only create content that feels natural and authentic to yourself and your art and your business. One thing that I've always known deep down as I've grown my Instagram account over the past four-ish years is that I never wanted to fall into creating trendy content just for the hope of going viral. So I didn't wanna create reels of me dancing on the screen or pointing to words or lip syncing a trending audio and absolutely no shade to anyone who does that but I personally cannot pull that off if I were to do something like that I always feel very cringy and very awkward so I've just tried to find ways that I can still create unique content that is fun to watch and binge worthy but just in my own way and related to stuff I'm actually doing in my art practice so that's most commonly just painting process videos that I then turn into reels. Sometimes I'll do an order packing video or uh, one time I showed a book binding project that I did for creating my own sketchbook, but it's always related to something I'm personally working on or related to my art in some way. And again, if there is a trend that you feel very excited about and it still lets you be authentic, then by all means go for it and have fun being creative, but just don't feel like you have to do those trendy things just, again, for the hope of going viral. It's usually pretty obvious to see when someone is doing this and it doesn't always feel very natural or authentic and they're probably attracting an audience that doesn't necessarily fit with them or their brand. Number seven, this kind of counters what I just said in number six, but that is to experiment with trending audio. I know I just said not to fall into the trendy stuff, but that was more so with the content that you're posting. When it comes to audio, I do usually try to find songs that still fit the vibe of my videos, but ones that are still on the trending audio list. So for example, if I'm posting a floral painting process video, which is what I normally do, I'm not gonna choose a trending audio clip that is, let's say, a rap song or a funny quote from a movie just for the sake of being on the trending list. Obviously that wouldn't really fit the vibe of my video, it wouldn't complement my artwork, but I can still usually find serene, beautiful songs that fit my video that are still on the trending list. So that's one way that you can still increase the chance of your reel going viral by using trending audio, but 
using trending audio that still complements your video and that will help it to feel more natural and authentic to you as well. And you can always tell if the song is on a trending list by looking for that upwards arrow next to the name of the audio. Okay, number eight is a little bit different and that is to utilize Pinterest to drive traffic back to your reels. I could go on for hours about how beneficial Pinterest has been for growing my art business. It reached almost 3 million monthly views at one point last year, but I'll keep it short for the sake of this video. My top performing pins on Pinterest have always been my Instagram reels that I just basically repost to Pinterest. So I literally just upload my reel to Instagram like I normally would, and then I also upload it to Pinterest, and then I add in my keywords into the title and description. You can also just copy and paste your caption. And then I put the link to my reel into the URL box. So it's a simple step of reposting content that you've already made onto another platform to get more eyes onto your Instagram account or your reel. Don't sleep on Pinterest when it comes to marketing your art business. It's the perfect place for doing just that. And it can really be a game changer. It has been for my business. And if you're new to posting on Pinterest, maybe you've just been using it to find recipes or find art inspiration, a good way to start is by doing what I just said, just reposting your reels or your TikToks or your YouTube shorts onto Pinterest and you're good to go. So that's a quick and easy way to get started with it. Number nine is a quick one and you might already be doing this, but make sure when you upload your reels within the Instagram app, you turn on the setting that allows it to upload at the highest quality. Of course you want your video that you just spent time and energy on to look good once it's actually posted. And if this setting is turned off, Instagram will likely decrease the video quality to upload it as quickly as possible. But if you can spare a couple extra seconds to make sure it uploads at the full quality, you should definitely have this setting turned on. All right, and number 10 is to tag the brands or the companies that you use in your painting or drawing process. As an example, I am a Princeton ambassador, so I'm always tagging Princeton in all of my reels, but you can also tag the paper or the paint brands that you use. No guarantee that anything will come from this, but most of the time, those brands usually have tens or hundreds of thousands of followers, and sometimes they will like or comment or repost your reels, which will help get thousands of eyes on it. Most brands really appreciate user-generated content like this, and they want to be able to show off real-life artists using their products. So it's a good habit to just start tagging those brands, and you'll likely see a lot more traction start building up from that. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 tips for creating Instagram reels, specifically for artists or painters. Again, these are just based on my own experience of creating reels and building my audience over the past few years. Obviously, things change all the time algorithms change, but just do your best to experiment, get creative, and most importantly, have fun with the process. Yes, it would be amazing if your reels could go viral every time, but if you put that expectation and that pressure on yourself every time you create a reel, it's gonna end up being a lot more stressful than it is enjoyable. So let me know down below in the comments if you have any other tips or tricks or techniques for creating your reels. I would love to hear them, and I will have all of my tools and tech um, linked in the description if you're curious about any of the equipment that I use. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and you can also follow me on instagram at petals by priya and i will see you in the next video